Hi there, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be adding a home screen to a model-driven app using web resources. Just to give some context, I was creating this model-driven app for a company here. Some of the things are in Portuguese. I hope you don't mind, but it won't impact our learning. And I wanted to create a home screen here in this app, where when the user first opens the app, they can go directly to the pages that I want. In this case, I want to go to the production orders page. It's an app to manage production orders and add a second button to create a new production order. So going directly to this page. When I was editing the model driven app, I see that I can add a new page and here I can select a Dataverse table, a dashboard, a custom page that's a Canvas page made with Canvas app, a web resource and a navigation link. I know that I can do that with a custom page, but what about with web resource? So I decided to try, gave some search in the internet and didn't find anything very detailed and decided to do myself and understand how it works. So basically when I add a page, I just added the page in here, I can select the web resource and I see that here I can see the HTML pages. So I, I tried to create an HTML to see how it works. I created an HTML that's this one. It basically has style in it. Inside here we have the CSS. A script that will do some tricks that we are going to see later. And then the main part of the HTML, that's basically a header, an image, that's the logo, a message, and the two buttons. We can see that we have the two buttons in here. I will be sharing the code later, so don't worry. So I created this HTML and what I did was I went to the solution, added a new web resource. Once the panel is opened, I just chose the file that I had created. It already detected that's an HTML page. I just gave the, no the name homemodeldriven.html and clicked on save. I won't save now because mine is already in here. So I just uploaded as a web resource and then clicked on publish just to make sure this web resource is published. Back to my model driven, now I can find it. Not, not yet, but I'm going to refresh and see if I can find it. I'm going to select the page that I already added in the beginning and let's select again web resource and see if I find the home model driven that's in here. Once I selected, the HTML is already appearing in here. That's the HTML content, I forgot to show, but I can even open here in my browser. So I'm going to run it without debugging, it will open a browser, and here we have the HTML. Okay, so this is the content that I want to display in there, as we just saw. Going back to the model driven, I selected the web resource that I just added, I can also change the icon of this page. So I'm going to select another web resource. And here we have several icons already from the system. I'm going to find the home icon. Let's see if I can find. No, house, maybe, no. So maybe it doesn't exist. Let me try searching one by one. Well, it's a little slow, so never mind. Let's skip this part, or maybe just select any icon here just to show it working. Icon and apply. That will apply this Power Pages icon with the globe in here. Now that I already configured everything I want, I'm going to save and publish.
Now I'm going to hit play to see the app working. Let's see how it works. It may not appear in the beginning. I'll give a couple of refreshes to see if it clears the cache and shows the new results. Here it is. We have this one, this page called Initio, that means beginning or home. And if I click, I can see already this page here in the home screen of my model driven app. Now, if the user goes and play the model driven app, they are going to start on that page. This is the model driven app. I'm going to click on play. And here they see the two buttons. They can click on create new order that will go directly to the form of the production orders. Or they can click on view existing orders to go to this page, production orders, where we can see the view. Basically, you just need to get this HTML, save on your computer, or upload and repeat the same process. And I'm going to show soon how to get this code. But just to explain a little better how this HTML works, let's just give a deeper look so I can explain what I had to do. As we can see, we have the HTML here. The visuals are controlled by the style that are inside this tag. For this, you basically need to understand CSS. That's part of developing for HTML pages, for developing for web and styling things. I'm not going to explain what the design is changed here. Here you can see the colors, the fonts, the spacings and so on. If we look at the buttons, we have a function that's called navigate to and I pass the action that I want to do, that is create or lists, and then the entity, the table name that I want to show in the app. In my case, this is the name of the table, RBA underscore order in the product call. That means production orders, because I created those tables and added to the model driven. This is the table called order in the production. So basically what you need to adapt if you want to use this code is changing in here. The logical name of the table is the name of the table. We can see here when we go to the tables view, we can see here in the top somewhere. Here we have entity equals RBA underscore order in the production. So this is the logical name. Nice. This function comes from the script part. And here we have a couple of things. When the HTML is rendered here inside this model driven, it needs to get the app URL in order to redirect to the correct page. Also, it needs to get the app ID. So that JavaScript has logic that does this. It gets the URL and the app ID in order to assemble the whole URL that this button is going to take us. Basically, this is what this code does. It needs to get the URL params that are that's the app ID, and also it needs to get it needs to set the title of the page. As you can see here, it sets the title as production order management. This comes from the code that's in here. But the thing that was a little complex is that I had to add some extra logic here because this HTML is placed inside an iframe and then it doesn't access directly this URL. It access the iframe information and the iframe is inside this page and the iframe has this information here that I want to get. So I have some code in there to check if it's inside an iframe or not. So it works in both scenarios. In this case, it's actually placed inside an iframe automatically and I had to do that. You can inspect the code and understand it. It's all commented and there is no much to change in here because the function navigates to, it's already parameterized here in the HTML. So you just need to change this part. And of course, here the code, the title. While I was developing this code, one thing that I had to do is to add a debug parameter here. 
So I have this const debug mode, I can set to true and save. And if, if I upload again, I'm going to see that information here, that's the app ID and the URL, just for debugging purposes. Basically what I need to do is to go back to the web resources, edit this one. Here I try to paste the code directly here, sometimes it doesn't work. Maybe it's the size of the code, I don't know. But if I choose the file again and replace it, it will work fine. So let's save. Publish this file again. And now that's published, let's refresh here and see if it will show the debugging part. Now that I did a couple of refreshes, we can see the base URL and the app ID that I showed here in this div here in the bottom that appears once that debug flag is enabled. Also, we can see that it shows some messages in the terminal. So if I click here on inspect, I can see the console and the message should appear in here. Here they are, detected base URL and retrieved app ID. Notice that when I opened the same HTML here in my browser and I tried to click on the buttons, the code is also telling me that it's not inside a model-driven app, so it cannot recover the app ID. And we can see here that's not found. This is what happens if something is wrong. Now we already saw how it worked, I'm going to show where you can get this HTML code to try on your site and do your adaptations. First, I would like to let you know that we have the members area here below and with a small amount you can help me produce more content like this. Now let me show this site, that's the powerappstools.com. This is where we are going to get the code powerappstools.com Here's a site where we can share snippets for Power Apps mainly, but now I just created a new tab for sharing code for Model Driven. It's still not even here, I need to publish to prods, so let me get the dev version. So here we are, and here's the version that you are going to see when you go to that URL, and we have now, under the snippet session, the XRM model driven. And here I have published this code. It's the only code right now. You can even publish yours if you want, if you have something useful to share. This is a site for the community to share content. So basically you can click on add and add your own snippet. It's very easy to follow here. But what we need to do is just find this one called HTML welcome page web resource, click on it, and then we can click on this icon to copy the code. With the code copied, you can go back to your code editor, create a new file and paste, and the code is here, you can just save it and adapt to your scenario. And then repeat all the process that I just did. I hope this lesson was useful, let me know in the comments if that helped. Also consider subscribing and becoming a member to help me produce more and more content like this. See you in the next video.